Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wonder is he here? Hanging out in the middle of nowhere in the desert at a place that people have been telling me I should go check out for a long time. Okay, it's this crazy house. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what it looks like. Kinda looks like a UFO on top of a mountain. Well, according to the sign and according to Google Maps, it's called the Volcano House. But according to me and a bunch of other people, it's better known as Huell Hauser's house. Okay, Huell Hauser, uh, unless you grew up in California, you probably don't know who Huell Hauser was. He was this big, tall, gay man, very good looking. He was from Tennessee, had a Southern accent, but he was queer as a $3 bill. I hope it, nobody takes offense at my saying that, but he was. He went around to all these weird places in the desert, weird little towns, funky little things, and made videos. He kind of was the inspiration for me when I started this channel. It was just him with a microphone, and then he had a friend, I think his friend's name was Jamie, or Jaime, had a video camera. And just the two of them went around all these weird attractions, and they made videos just poking around. And he was kind of notorious for his enthusiasm and his shamelessness. Like he would just go in any small little town and go into anybody's workshop and go, hey, what are y'all doing in here? Well, apparently he was real good at what he did because, well, he eventually was able to afford this magnificent spread. I mean, dang, even the, these gates alone are worth a purdy, purdy penny. I mean, look at this. If I zoom in or come in close, and you might not be able to tell because it's kind of backlit, but it's made out of some kind of weird metal. I guess it's supposed to look like cactus, but then there's these little tendrils made out of rebar. I mean, these are massive gates and there's one, two, three. Well, there's a friggin' fence that goes all the way around the whole place. It wasn't cheap. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, the way he was able to afford a spread like this, just going around doing what I do is well, he was so good at it that he eventually got his own television show. And he was on PBS in California. I think mostly Southern California, but then eventually he expanded to the whole state for years. I want to say he started in maybe the 90s. He, I think he was on TV all through the 90s and 2000s. He passed away. Oh, gosh. I want to say he passed away about 10 years ago. And when he died, he left this house and all his papers and everything to a, to a university, I think. I'm not sure which one, I can't remember. Uh, apologies for not doing my research, but I didn't actually expect to be in this neighborhood. Well, frankly, I wasn't even really in the neighborhood. I was in the area. There's nothing in this neighborhood, as you can see, other than an extraordinary amount of garbage. I mean, I don't know if you can see, but there's like a huge dump or something over there. And man, the whole landscape is just littered in crap just trash everywhere and i know how that is it gets real windy out here and stuff blows out of people's trash cans so it's not all just littering but i can't imagine it was like this when huel was living on top of the mountain here i think it's funny they call it a volcano house because it really does kind of look like a volcano you know like from a distance it actually looks like a little snow-capped volcano or kind of like a well pardon my coarse language a titty I'm just saying, that's what it looked like to me. And what's really cool about it, and you probably can't tell from here, is there's a driveway to get up it, and it's a spiral driveway. It goes around and around. You can sort of see it curving up there, and then at the very top. And I actually, I don't, it doesn't even look like it's paved. It looks like a dirt driveway. Which is pretty impressive to me, because as I was driving here, this is a dirt road too to get here. I mean, you have to go out into the back friggin' 40 to get to this house, and it's not paved, and I thought, Oh, surely a celebrity like Huel Hauser would have had a paved road to his house. Am I going the right way? Well, apparently it wasn't paved then and his driveway wasn't even paved and I guess it didn't bother him. Now, I don't know if, I think this was probably just like a vacation house for him. I can't imagine he was that wealthy, but maybe he was. I don't know. Maybe PBS has deep pockets uh, because I've also, I, I have a friend who used to live in Palm Springs. He was a valet attendant in Palm Springs and Huel Hauser used to come into the I can't remember if it was a restaurant or wherever the guy worked, parking cars. And he, well, he was gay. And he was a, well, whatever you call the gay equivalent of a ladies' man. A man's man, I guess. He liked, he liked the, the guys, the boys. And my friend was younger, a cute little valet parker. And so Huel Hauser would always hit on him. And so I think he lived in Palm Springs. But then I have another uh, sort of acquaintance on YouTube who also knew Huel Hauser in Los Angeles. So apparently Huel Hauser lived in LA, Palm Springs, 
and out here in the middle of nowhere, which technically I think we're in a place called Newberry Springs, which is kind of this vast blighted corner of the Mojave Desert. I shouldn't say blighted because there's actually a lot of really nice places in Newberry Springs. There's a lot of groundwater here. Matter of fact, I just passed like two alfalfa farms. Alfalfa out here. Anyway, I'm sure Newberry Springs is actually a pretty nice place to live, but you know, I don't know, for somebody famous on the TV, it just seems like kind of a weird place to have a house. And I don't know if it was like this when he built it, like maybe somebody had already built this weird, I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can, why not? Uh, maybe that's why he moved out here because this house was already here and he thought it was so badass that he, well, had to buy it. Wow, that is amazing. I mean, windows all the way around. It looks like a friggin' UFO about to take off. Oh, maybe that's why he liked it. He was hoping uh, it, some other aliens would come down and probe him. <laughs> Uh, don't take any offense, everybody. I come in peace. I, I'm a huge Huelhauser fan. Unfortunately, he passed away, like I said, many years ago. I never had a chance to meet him. I would have loved to meet him. I have a feeling we would have gotten along pretty well because we both like the same kind of weird stuff. I mean, can you imagine any better <laughs> duo than Wonder Hussy and Huelhauser? Now, I bet you anything, there's a bunch of Huelhauser fans watching this going, sacrilege! Uh, don't even mention your name in the same sentence as Huelhauser. He has that kind of emotional uh, response for a lot of people. People grew up watching his show and he's very important to a lot of people. So I don't mean to offend anyone. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of Yule Hauser. He was a big inspiration to me and my channel. Now I'm not gonna lie. I didn't grow up watching his show even though I grew up in California from about the age of 12 to 24. I don't know, for whatever reason, we didn't watch him at our house. It wasn't on our radar. I grew up in Northern California. I feel like it was more of a Southern California thing. I mean, we are here in Southern California now. Far Southeastern California. Hardly even counts as California. You know, you don't see any palm trees or movie stars down here. No, all you see are stop signs. I mean, golly, look at this stop sign. I just noticed this, it says, stop, sorry, no tours, private guests only. Oh my God, I would die to be a private guest at the Volcano House. In the memory of Huel Hauser, calling Huel Hauser, send your minions down here to beam me up and take me into the Volcano House. Seriously, if anybody watching this video has the means to and is inclined to get me into this Volcano House, oh my gosh, I would love I mean, I'd love to spend the night here, but even just to get in for like an hour, even a half hour, hell, even 15 minutes. I'm that big of a fan. Okay, it says no trespassing, protected by video surveillance, but I'm guessing I can at least, you know, poke my friggin' camera through the fence. I mean, we're not gonna be able to see anything that we didn't already see, but golly, man, I sure would like to get in that house. And it's interesting, there's other buildings on the property. That looks like a... Uh, over there on the left, it almost looks like an old railroad caboose. And then there's some kind of like two-story building over there. And there's actually well, there's some cars parked out there. Well, I wonder if somebody's actually there right now. They're probably watching me on camera going, who is this idiot? Then they probably recognize me and went, oh, it's that idiot. Definitely don't let her in. In fact, the cops are probably on their way right now. <laughs> actually, probably not because we're in like the farthest corner of San Bernardino County, I think. Uh, and trust me, them San Bernardino police have a lot more going on than worrying about some YouTubing ninny looking through a wrought iron cactus grate at a volcano house. Now, I thought I might have read somewhere online that this place is available on Airbnb? I'm not sure. Uh, if anybody watching has any information, uh, please post it in the comments below or email me. I'm very curious to find out more about this place and if I could ever get into it and oh gosh can you imagine how awesome it would be to live here I mean yeah you say that and then you go well hold on a minute would you really want to live out here I mean it's hotter than blazes it today's April 7th and it's already pretty hot like 80 degrees I think was the high so imagine in July and August it's got to be super friggin' hot now I don't even know if that place is air conditioned <laughs> I mean at the very least I hope it has a swamp cooler it looks like, I mean, there's power lines going to it, so it's got to be connected to electricity. Plenty of water in the area. Like I said, there's alfalfa fields not too far from here. And I think there might even be a big pond next to the house. So he probably has a well, well water. Um, 
I mean, if he has electricity, he could, you could easily put in a mini split like we did at our Death Valley compound. You could stay cool in the summer. And as far as, you know, going into town and services, groceries, stuff like that, well, we're not that far from Barstow. I'd guess it's probably only about a half hour's drive to Barstow. That's not too bad. That's like where I live now in Death Val outside Death Valley. Uh, it's about a 40 minute drive to the nearest grocery store. And it's, I mean, yeah, it's a little challenging, but it's doable. The only downside I could see is that it would be pretty isolated. I mean, at least where I live, I can walk down the street and there's like places you can get a drink and restaurants and stuff like here. <laughs> you're not walking anywhere. I mean, well, you could, but you're not really going to get anywhere anytime soon. This is such a desolate landscape. Anyway, this is kind of a lame video because I can't go in the property or on the property and really look around at anything, but I've had several people email me and tell me I should do a video about Huel Hauser's house. So I hope you're happy, guys. Here I am. This is as close as I can get to it. Let's go ahead and zoom in one more time before we leave. I don't know. Can you guys even see anything through the windows? I don't see anything. Gosh, I don't even know if there's anything in there, what they use it for. I just sure hope they're using it for something because it would be a sin for a badass house like that with badass gates like this to go to waste. All right, well, I'm going to get back in my car and drive back to civilization now. Well, actually, I'm going home, so I guess I'm going to go through civilization. Well, no, I'm not even going. My route from this house to my place... The only thing that even passes for civilization that I'll be going through is Baker, California. So that ought to tell you how desolate and remote this part of the country is. Now that I think about it, that is kind of cool, though, that my house and Huel Hauser's house, I'm only about two hours away from here, and it's all desolate desert in between. So, well, Huel Hauser, if you're watching this from, you know, up above or down below or wherever you are, maybe you're all around me, maybe you are me, maybe you're this camera, who knows, you could be part of everything. Uh, we're neighbors now, how about that, Huel? I have a feeling that you're smiling at me. No, maybe you're not, maybe you're flipping me the bird going, shut up, stop talking about my house, Ma. No, Huel wouldn't do that, he was a cool guy. And I just have a feeling a kindred spirit. If he was alive today, we'd be best friends. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tour. I'm gonna get in my car and turn on my air conditioning, man. Woo-wee, it is hot.